All right, um, I'm just going to do a quick video explaining this homework, um, 4.2 to 4.4. Um, basically, what I wanted you to get out of this homework was that we have a couple different ways that we can either approximate the area or find the area underneath the curve. Um, first, we went back to our left and right endpoints to approximate the area um, by thinking of these rectangles, then doing the limit process to find the exact value and then finding a definite integral to find that same exact value. And then I just threw the average value in there to find the average value of the height of the graph and figuring out what x value has that height. Um, so I'll just kind of quickly talk through what I did each step here. Um, essentially what I did here, left endpoints, okay, this is the width of the um, each rectangle. So essentially what that is, is... Um, breaking up this length of 2 into 4 rectangles. 2 divided by 4 gives us 1 half. So that is the width of all of our rectangles. And then these f of 0 over 2, f of 1 over 2, those are the heights of our rectangles. If we are using the left endpoint, that's why we have 0 through 3. When we go to use the right endpoints, it is 1 through 4. And all I did here was I plugged in those values to get um, these things here and here. And essentially what those help me with, these four things here, help me come up with this summation. Coming up with the summation, usually it's always going to be either an i minus 1 or just an i, depending on if you, it is 0 through 3. Okay. Because we have to do i equals 1 to i equals 4, in order for us to get 0 through 3, it has to be i minus 1 here. Okay. And then these steps here are just me simplifying this so that I can use the summation formula so that I just have it as an i squared, an i, and a 1, and then a 4 here. Um, so that I can use those summation formulas. With these left endpoints, if we were to look at this on a graph and actually draw the rectangles, this is an upper bound, so this is the rectangles would be above your graph. This is the largest that our area would be, so we would say that it has to be less than 6.25. And then when we do it with our right endpoints, we get 4.25, so we know it has to be greater than that, the area under the curve. Okay. Um, then here I did the limit process. Um, I wrote, uh, before we went home, um, we did this as um, B minus A, over n and then f of b minus a times i over n okay so that's where i got this from that equation you should have that written down i think i wrote it on the board maybe three or four straight days um, that's to help us come up with this equation for our limit process and then essentially what we're doing here is we're doing the same thing breaking this down so that we can then just have i squared and a constant so that we can use our um, summation formulas again which i used here okay um, once we get to this step, plugging in our summation formulas, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to simplify this here. What I did was this n squared, sorry, I'm looking through my iPad. This n squared cancels out with this n. And then this 4 cancels out with this 6 to become 2 thirds. That's how I got to this here. That's why this n is not squared and why this is a 2 and this a 3. Um, and then what I did was I just foiled this out to come up with this top here. Okay. You could have done this simplifying a little differently. You could have multiplied this 2 over n times this 2 over n to start. Um, I just kind of did it inside out, which I feel like is the easiest way. Um, whichever way you do it, you should end up with this type of thing here at the bottom. I saw some of you on your work, you combine this with this and that works as well. Um, but then when we take the limit as n approaches infinity, we're thinking about um, those rules of basically the horizontal asymptotes that we did um, before we came on to break here, or on to um, distance learning. Okay. So because these exponents are the same, we look at the numbers out in front, negative 8 thirds. And then this, when we have a number times a constant, we just have that number. So we can see here, 24 over 3, that is just 8. And when I combine those, I get 16 thirds as my answer. Okay. When I do it, so what that actually is, it, that is the exact value of the area underneath the curve. 
with this definite integral, okay, this is the new stuff that we've been doing. Okay, when we do this definite integral, we should get the same value which we did get here um, by um, using that fundamental theorem of calculus, okay, doing the antiderivative and then plugging in the upper limit minus the lower limit. Okay. Really all I did here was plug in the upper limit because if I plugged in zero, it would just be zero. And then our last step, finding the average value, okay, we are using this formula that I gave you, 1 over b minus a times basically taking the definite integral here. Um, what I did was this part here, we already found that. We found that to be 16 thirds. So I just plugged 16 thirds in and multiplied it by 1 half to get this 8 thirds. And then the last part of these questions said that we want to figure out what x values give me this average value. So I am just setting the equation equal to 8 thirds and solving for x. Okay. When I solve for x, I get this plus or minus 2 over root 3, which is 1.15. The reason that I only looked at the positive value, or I only took the positive value, was because we're looking at this from 0 to 2, or back over here, from 0 to 2. So that negative 1.15 is not on our interval, so we don't include that. Okay. And then going over the second example, should be pretty similar, um, only easier because it doesn't have that plus 4 in there. Um, it's basically the same process, so I'm not going to go fully through it. Um, it's just some things that I want to point out. Okay. Um, this one here, because this x squared is going to be a curve going up, the left endpoints of our rectangles are now going to be under the curve. All right. Rather than the last one where we had a negative one, the left endpoints were above it. So that's why here the left endpoint is actually less than the right endpoints. Um, but we still know that the area is going to be in between these two, which 8 thirds that I got both with the limit process and the definite integral is in between 1 and 3 fourths and 3 and 1 fourth. Okay. And then it's actually funny that we get the same average value, or we didn't get the same average value, we got a different average value. We actually got the same x value here. Um, Basically, that's just um, by coincidence here. When we took the square root, it happened to be the same number here. It's not always going to be this 1.15. It just happened to be for that one. Um, so your quiz that I'm going to send out tomorrow is going to be pretty similar to this. It'll be just one example of these. Um, we'll talk more about that tomorrow. Um, so here are those two examples.